I want to show you how you can take advantage of a security hole and bypass the Windows logon and how you can reset your password without any software. But I have a few warnings before I do, is that first it worked for me. And so you're responsible if you proceed to do as I'm doing to reset your password of anything that doesn't go right. And especially if you don't do as I'm doing because we're going to be dealing with the part of the computer's programming. And so let's stay away from those things we don't know anything about and not freeze up and destroy our computer. Second of all, if any of your items are encrypted, you'll permanently lose access to all those files. And so you may want to find some software or some services to get what you need and not do this. Which brings up a third point. I read somebody who didn't know they had encrypted files by the previous coworker, and so when they reset the password, they lost all those files. So if you're not sure, then do some homework. And to help you get an idea about encryption, you can watch my Windows training video on Windows BitLocker Drive Encryption. So the first thing we need to do, here's our splash screen that when I click on it, there's the login. I can type in a password, type it, go ahead and hit enter. It says it's incorrect, click okie dokie. And my password is P. Oh, that's very subtle, P for password. In any case, I can click on the arrow, can't log in, click okie dokie. And the reason why I did that is because when you reset the password, you can actually avoid having a password at all. And just go ahead and click on this to bypass that. And I'll show you how you can do that. But before I do that, I want to be able to bring up the command prompt window on this log on screen because here it'll give me access to reset the password. Now, how do I do that? It's down below here, the ease of access. Now, that's the utility manager, the file that controls that, that when you click on it, it opens up. And this is for those who have disabilities, like if, if they need to narrate this or have a magnifier to be able to see things clearer on their screen at a greater magnification. In any case, let's go ahead and click off that. So I need to be able to convert this button into the command window that when I click on it, doesn't open up the utility manager, the disabilities or ease of access, but the command window so I can reset the password. So to do that, I need to open up the command prompt. And I know that sounds redundant, but I can open it up prior to the screen, which when I do that, I can go ahead and add some code that allows me to convert this into the command prompt window, if that makes sense. Now to open up this command prompt, which won't be in this window just yet, I gotta code it for it, I can do it one of a couple of ways. I can either do it when I restart the computer, and during the boot process, it says boot from CD or DVD. When you see that come up, before it actually starts booting up the windows, go ahead and hit any key on the keyboard, and then I'll take it from there, and then I'll show you the second way. So let's do that first. Let's go ahead and restart our computer. Click on the power button, and restart. Now, yeah. If you restart, you and other people using this PC could lose unsaved work. Well, I can't even get to it. Go ahead and click restart anyways. And there you go. Press any key when you see that CD or DVD drive. And it starts loading up the Windows files like it's going to install it. Now, mine's going to show for Windows 7 because I upgraded from Windows 7 to Windows 10. It may not do that for you, but that's okay. So whether you get the Windows 7 install window here or Windows 10, it doesn't matter. Because once you're at this point, just hold down the shift key and hit F10. And voila, we got our command prompt window. Now, you can't type in the code here to reset the password because that can only be done from the logon screen. But from here, we can code it to say, OK, when I get to my logon screen, change the ease of access button to a command prompt window. And then we can go ahead and code that to reset our password. So you can do it this way. And if you find that you can't do it this way and it doesn't pull up, then the other way to go ahead and bring up the command prompt, let's close out of here and close out of here and say yes we want to cancel the Windows installation and before I do that is that you want to do a force shutdown twice so when your computer starting up and you get past the CD DVD booting and you see the Windows logo up there on the screen press and hold down the power button on your computer for three to five seconds until it shuts off instantly and then restart your computer and then hold down the power button again until it does another force shutdown just right in the middle of you holding it down and then restart your computer again. And then what we're looking for is the automatic repair mode. So let's go ahead and do that and see if we can get this command prompt up. So yeah, we want to click cancel. We'll bypass this. And then once it starts up with the Windows logo, go ahead and press and hold down the power button for three to five seconds, which I just did. So it's now starting up a second time. Then go ahead and press and hold down the power button right now until it does a force shutdown. And then we're starting up again. There we go, preparing automatic repair. That's what we want to see. So let it go ahead and do its thing. Diagnosing the PC. It'll take us to a place that we want to go so we can bring up that command prompt window. 
So automatic repair it says the PC did not start correctly. Okay, just go ahead and click on advanced options. Then click on troubleshoot. Click on advanced options. And there we go, command prompt, yay, click on it. Now we're in control. So the next thing we need to do is we need to find out the directory that our Windows operating system is installed on. So we can go ahead and code it. And when we code it, we can tell it that we want to go ahead and change the ease of access button on the Windows logon screen to the command prompt and not the utility manager. So which drive? Is it the C drive? Typically it's the C drive that's going to have your Windows operating system installed. So to find out, go ahead and type in C, shift colon, hit enter, and then you can see it changes to the C drive. And then type in DIR for directory, hit enter. And do you see any Windows directory there? No, I don't. So it's not on the C drive on my computer. So let's go down to the next letter, D colon, hit enter, then DIR for directory, hit enter, and there we go. There's the Windows operating system directory on the D drive here, and also the old Windows operating system, Windows 7, so it had it backed up. Let me go ahead and scroll down so we can bring the D drive to the middle of the screen. The next thing we want to do is when we're on the D drive that contains the Windows directory, the Windows files, is to go ahead and type in CD for change directory, and type in Windows because what we want to do is we want to go from the D drive to the directory or the folder on the D drive which is Windows by typing CD Windows hit enter so now it's on the D drive in the Windows folder and in the Windows folder we want to change directory again so in the Windows folder we're looking for system 32 and hit enter okay on the D drive in the Windows folder in the system 32 folder the next thing we want to do is we want to rename the file that controls the ease of access button and it's called the util man or utility manager. So what we want to do is we want to type in REN for rename, REN util man dot exe space util man and I'm going to do two dot exe. So I'm taking that file that when you click on the ease of access button that I'm going to rename it so it's no longer, when you click on it, going to execute this utility manager command. So I renamed it so it's still in my operating system and something that I won't forget, hopefully, because Utilman2, it's just renaming it. So when I'm ready and I want to reset everything back to the way it was after I am able to log on, after I reset the password, then I can go, oh yeah, I need to put Utilman2 back to its original name, Utilman. So go ahead and hit enter to rename it. We're done there. And then next, go ahead and type in copy cmd.exe, the command file. For this command window, that's what brought up this window. You can see cmd.exe. We're saying, let's make a copy of that and call it. Okay, let me get out of the way here. So we're copying the command file that opens up the command window, and we're copying it and naming it utilman.exe. So you see where I'm going? So I took the utility man that opens up the ease of access when you click on that button and I said when you click on it go ahead and open up the command window which has been copied and is now the util man. So util man is util man 2 so when you click on the ease of access it doesn't do a thing except now it's going to open up the command window because we said to go ahead and make a copy of it and call it the util man. And then go ahead and hit enter. And that's it. One file has been copied and now it's called the util man. Our work is done. So let's go ahead and close out of here. And we want to restart our computer. So let's go ahead and turn off our PC. I'm going to go ahead and restart. Here we are. Let's go ahead and click on it. And it's right there, the ease of access. And when I click on it, it opens up the command window. Oh, that's fancy. Now that we're in the command window for the logon screen, we can reset our password. So to do it, just go ahead and type in control space user passwords 2 and hit enter and it opened up our user accounts window oh isn't that nice now I can go ahead and select my username and say that I want to go ahead and reset my password click on it type in a new password type in the same password to confirm it but if you leave it blank and you click okie dokie then I don't need a password and when I click OK again and I'm done I close out I can just go ahead and click on the arrow Hey, I'm logged in. Now to go ahead and reset back everything to the way it was by changing the utility manager, the ease of access, back to itself and not as the command prompt. So to do that, down below on the taskbar, let's go ahead and click on the folder to open up the file explorer. 
Come over here in the navigation pane, this PC, let's go to the C drive. Scroll down, there's the C drive. Of course, mine was on the D drive, but that's okay. Let's go to the C drive because that's where the effects are taking place on my computer. And then come over here, go to the Windows folder, double click, and you want to scroll down to find the System32 because remember, that's what we changed. There you go, System32. And we need to find utilman.exe. So we can just come up here in the search field and type it in. Utilman. And there it is. And remember, the Utilman right now is the command prompt window. That's why you have the command prompt icon. So we want to right click on that and delete it. And say continue. We want to do this. And it gets rid of it. So right now, if I log off with it being deleted now, it just needs to refresh and then it'll disappear. When I click on that ease of access button, because it's assigned to the Utilman name, which was assigned to the command prompt window, since nothing's assigned to it now, when anybody clicks on it, it's going to go what? So what we need to do is we need to take what we renamed as Utilman2 as our backup to get rid of the two. And so the Utility Manager, when you click on the ease of access, will open up that window for those who have disabilities. So what we need to do is we can go ahead and right click on it and this isn't going to work, trust me, because the trusted installer by default has control of these files. So nobody inadvertently does something to them. So when you come down here to rename it and say, okay, I just want to delete the two, that's it, and not anything else, leave it utilman.exe. Now this brings up a good point. On your Windows operating system, you probably don't see the extension, which is the extension of the name. So the name over on the left hand side of the dot here is the file name. Then you have a dot, which you probably don't see, and then to the right-hand side, the extended part of the name, or what's known as the extension, that tells the operating system what program to open up this file in when you double-click on it. Now, the reason why you can't see it is because, well, by default, it's turned off, because if you delete this extension, rename it, it'll probably open up in another program that doesn't recognize the file and could do some damage, or at the very least, not be readable in that program. So if you want to watch my Windows training video on extensions, how to show and hide the extensions and the dangers and to be careful with the extensions, then go ahead and watch that. Otherwise, what you're seeing here is only available on my computer because I'm showing the extensions. In any case, if you just go ahead and delete the two there and you hit enter on the keyboard and you say yes, go ahead and continue. And you say yes, please move forward. It says access denied. Okay, why? Because you require permissions from the trusted installer. Now the trust installer is the default guy who takes control of this so you don't do anything dangerous and what we're doing here but we know what we're doing and what we want to do is we want to take the permission from the trusted installer and actually give it to ourselves so we can go ahead and change this back to the way it was. So to do that let's go ahead and click cancel and if you refresh it here it'll go ahead and drop it off because it's deleted it's just ghosting out on us. I've already done this so just follow along here and do the same steps and you'll be fine. Go ahead and let's back out of here. Click on close. And we're in the System32 folder right there. So we want to go back out to the Windows folder so we can see the System32 folder here that's in the Windows folder. And scroll down and right click on it and go down to Properties. And then click on the Security tab. And we want to go down to Advanced. And up here on the owner, it'll say trusted installer. So you can go ahead and click change and then click on advanced and then click on find now and then scroll down to the bottom, find users and double click. And there we go, click OK. And then when we're done, let's go ahead and click apply. If you just take an ownership, you'll need to close and reopen the object's properties for you can view or change permissions. OK, click OK, click OK. And then in this window, what you need to do is you need to scroll down and select the users and go ahead and click on edit and check because it won't be checked. Full control. Go ahead and check that and then go ahead and click OK and then click OK. And then you can go ahead and open up the System32 folder, double click. And then come up here and type in Utilman. And there you go. We can go ahead and right-click on it and then go down to rename it. Delete the two. Hit enter. It accepts it. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and close out of here and let's take it for a test drive. Let's click on the Start button and click on Moi, me, and then go ahead and say that we want to lock this. 
and then click. And what happens when we click on the ease of access? We're back to business. Cool. No more command prompt. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.